book of Ezekiel is a profound testament within the Bible, often overshadowed by more familiar passages, yet rich in spiritual and historical significance. Ezekiel's era was one of tremendous adversity and hardship. Zedekiah, the last puppet king of Judah, governed Jerusalem with a fragile army. His reign culminated in a devastating siege by the formidable forces of Nebuchadnezzar. Captured and humiliated, Zedekiah witnessed the execution of each of his sons before being blinded, a cruel act ensuring his last visual memory was of their deaths. Following this, Nebuchadnezzar commanded the total destruction of Jerusalem, leaving the once thriving city in ruins. During these dark times, Ezekiel was called to prophesy far from his homeland in Babylon. Amidst this historical turmoil, the spiritual song Dry Bones finds its origin. While its melody is captivating, it is rooted in a vision granted to Ezekiel by the Lord, the Valley of Dry Bones. This vision holds a profound message, reflecting the desolation and despair Ezekiel witnessed. Despite being physically distant from Jerusalem, Ezekiel was spiritually transported to a valley filled with dry, lifeless bones. In chapter 37, verses 1 and 2, Ezekiel recounts, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. This vision was not a physical relocation, but a deeply spiritual experience. Ezekiel felt the weight of a valley filled with the remnants of a once thriving community. The dryness of the bones indicated long-term abandonment, suggesting that this place had once been vibrant, but now lay desolate. God orchestrated this vision to profoundly impact Ezekiel, revealing the stark hopelessness of the situation. Such powerful encounters serve as a reminder that without vigilance, our own homes and lives can deteriorate into mere piles of dry bones. Ezekiel's vision transcends its historical context, offering timeless lessons for our lives. It symbolizes the desolation and spiritual dryness that can infiltrate our existence if we neglect our relationship with the divine. The story of Ezekiel and the Valley of Dry Bones calls us to examine the spiritual health of our lives, urging us to seek divine intervention when faced with the barren landscapes of our souls. Neglecting the teachings and principles found in God's Word can lead to our spiritual and familial foundations becoming skeletal and lifeless. Even those who once walked closely with the Lord can find themselves reduced to mere shadows of their former selves, existing as echoes of what they once were rather than embodying their true potential. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 4 admonishes children to obey their parents in the Lord, for this is right. It emphasizes honoring one's father and mother, noting that this is the first commandment with a promise the promise of well-being and a long life on earth. This ancient principle highlights not just obedience, but the profound importance of honoring one's parents. The sacred text also guides parents, cautioning them not to provoke their children to anger, but to raise them with the instruction and guidance of the Lord. This timeless wisdom aims to foster harmony within families, allowing them to flourish under divine principles. These verses encapsulate the essence of familial relationships grounded in righteousness and love. Ezekiel's vision and his final test, whether these dry bones can live, challenge us to reflect deeply on our spiritual condition. It beckons us to recognize the potential for renewal and revival through divine intervention, reminding us that even the driest, most desolate bones can be brought back to life through faith and the power of God's Spirit. In this story of God's power, Ezekiel's vision shows how strong God's Word is to bring new life and change. 
the dry bones, once dead, came back to life because of God's word. Just as Ezekiel saw this miracle, we too can believe in the power of God's word to bring life to the dead parts of our lives. When we think about this story, we see how it applies to our own spiritual journey. Like the dry bones, there are parts of our lives that may seem dead and hopeless. But Ezekiel's story reminds us to trust in the power of God's word. It encourages us to speak God's word into our situations, knowing that the same God who brought the dry bones to life is still working in our lives today. As we journey through our faith, the words of Jesus in Luke 18:27 resonate deeply. What is impossible for people is possible for God. This powerful statement is a key part of the whole story. It shows that even when things seem impossible, God is in control and can make amazing things happen. These Bible passages together create a beautiful picture of God's wisdom, showing how His Word connects across different times. The obedience and honor taught in Ephesians match the actions of Ezekiel, highlighting God's power to save and transform. This shows how divine revelation can change lives and how God's Word is always relevant, guiding and reviving His people. These Bible stories invite us to think about the deep truths in God's Word. They encourage us to read the scriptures with respect, recognizing their power to bring new life and restoration. Just as Ezekiel saw the dry bones come to life, we are reminded that God's Word still has the same life-giving power today. It can breathe life into the most hopeless areas of our lives. As keepers of God's Word, we should continue to share it with conviction, trusting in its power to bring transformation and renewal in our lives. In the days of Ezekiel, the people of Israel found themselves in a state of desolation. They were nothing more than a congregation of lifeless bodies, moving in an orderly manner, devoid of the vitality that once defined them. It was a scene reminiscent of the words penned in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amid this spiritual aridity, a divine revelation unfolded before Ezekiel. The Lord spoke to him as recorded in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ezekiel was entrusted with a message, a prophecy, that would breathe life into the lifeless. A command echoed in the words of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 9. Also, he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. Some believe that the work of God could be accomplished through organization alone. However, Ezekiel, through divine instruction, came to understand that mere orderliness was not enough. A church might have its affairs in order, but without the breath of life, it remained a lifeless body. Ezekiel, a prophet chosen by God, was directed to preach to the breath. The term winds is derived from the Hebrew word ruach, meaning wind breath or spirit. Ezekiel discovered that all human endeavors are in vain unless the Holy Spirit is present. The divine breath of life is powerful. Ezekiel's message connects to the creation of Adam in Genesis 2, 7. The Lord God formed man from the dust and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. This breath is crucial for spiritual life and matches what Jesus taught in John 3, 5-8. Jesus said, we must be born again of water and the spirit, showing the difference between physical birth and spiritual rebirth. Ezekiel followed God's command and prophesied, and breath entered the lifeless bodies. This was a huge miracle, like when the dry bones became a vast army. In Ezekiel 37 to 10 to 13, 
God told Ezekiel that these bones were the people of Israel who felt hopeless and cut off. But through Ezekiel's message, God promised to open their graves and bring them back to Israel. This vision showed not only a revival, but also the restoration of Israel to its former glory. God's promise was to put his spirit in them, give them life, and settle them in their land, as fulfilled in Ezekiel 37, 14. This vision had deep meaning. It showed that the Israelites, who seemed hopeless and scattered, would experience a national rebirth with God's help. People thought the situation was hopeless, but they underestimated God's power. At the end of the vision, God reassured, I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will place you in your land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declared the Lord God. The vision showed Ezekiel how God would bring the bones of Israel back to life, using his word and spirit. This was a clear sign of God's ability to bring life to what seemed dead and to give hope to those who were despairing. In Ezekiel's time, obeying God's commands was very important. When Ezekiel followed God's instructions, God, in his great mercy, made the bones come together again. Tendons, flesh, and skin grew back, restoring their original form. But the miracle was not just about the physical bodies. These bodies needed God's spirit to breathe and come back to life. This event is a perfect example of revival, a spiritual awakening that is still relevant to the modern church. It reminds us that just following God's word is not enough. We also need his spirit to bring true life and renewal. True life transformation needs the breath of the Spirit. Without it, God's people cannot fully experience the presence of the Almighty. In 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18, the scripture says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled faces, behold the glory of the Lord, and are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. This comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. This passage shows how the Word and the Spirit work together. Their harmony brings freedom and transformation to God's people. If any of these, Word, Spirit, or obedience is missing, God's people cannot truly experience His presence. A spiritual awakening, like the revival in Ezekiel's vision, depends on the integration of these elements. Just as the dry bones came to life through the Word and the Spirit, the modern church also needs both for revival. The church today is called to renewal through the Word and the Spirit, keeping its spiritual life vibrant and avoiding lifeless religion. Looking at the dry bones in Ezekiel's vision and the state of the modern church, we see that without the Word and the Spirit, God's people are like a valley of dry bones, missing the essence of life and spiritual meaning. The relevance of this message extends beyond mere historical narrative, transcending time and culture, to address the perpetual need for spiritual revival in every generation. In the grand tapestry of God's redemptive plan, Ezekiel's vision serves as a prophetic foreshadowing of the spiritual restoration promised by God. Just as the dry bones were brought back to life, God offers a message of hope to those who acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In this acknowledgement, he breathes life into their spiritually dead existence, inviting them to share this message of hope with those still ensnared in the grip of sin and transgression. The Apostle Paul, inspired by the Spirit, echoes this message in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 proclaiming, you were dead in the trespasses and sins. This biblical truth underscores the desperate state of humanity before the redemptive work of Christ. It is through God's grace, mediated by faith, that we are brought back to life. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 reinforces this profound truth, but God shows his love for us 
in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In contemplating these verses, the transformative power of Christ becomes evident even when we are dead in our sins. Christ's sacrificial death on the cross paved. New beginning. This new life is not a product of human achievement. Rather, it is a divine gift bestowed upon us by the grace of God. It marks a complete transformation from the realm of spiritual death to a vibrant life in Christ, a life characterized by love, grace, and truth flowing from our faith in Jesus. This life-altering shift is not merely a promise for the future, it is a present reality. It is a tangible experience that unfolds in the daily walk with God. This new life empowers believers to confront life's challenges with unwavering faith, enduring hope, and boundless love, recognizing that in Christ they are more than conquerors. The vision of Ezekiel seeing the dry bones come to life is a powerful metaphor for renewal and restoration. Just as God promised to bring life to the dry bones and restore Israel, He promises to renew our spiritual lives. The contrast between the lifeless bones and the promised revival shows God's commitment to breathe life into the spiritually empty areas of our lives. This promise of renewal is timeless, going beyond the historical context of Ezekiel's vision. It assures believers that God's commitment to revive and renew is for every era and every person who turns to Him with repentance and faith. As we think about this sacred story, we remember our important role in sharing this message of hope with the world. Trapped in the consequences of sin, we must proclaim the Word and rely on the Spirit's guidance, becoming instruments of God's transformative power. Ezekiel's vision, once just ancient scripture, becomes real today as believers actively participate in the spiritual revival of people and communities. In the holy words of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 3 and 4, God makes a deep promise that goes beyond Israel to everyone who seeks Him. The Lord says, I have loved you with everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. These words show God's unchanging love and commitment to His people. This promise is not just about physical restoration, but also includes spiritual and emotional healing. This divine promise reminds us of the New Testament's message of renewal and restoration. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. This verse reminds us that in Christ, we go through a deep transformation and renewal, leaving behind our old sinful lives and starting a new journey filled with righteousness and truth. Furthermore, Romans 8, 10, 11 speaks about the strong connection between the believer and Christ. It says, but if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. In these verses, the Apostle elucidates the transformative power of the Holy Spirit, ushering in new life and enabling believers to walk in accordance with the divine will. Ezekiel's message and God's promise of restoration find resonance in the contemporary context. They serve as a timeless reminder of God's unyielding love and His ability to bring life where there is death and hope, where there is despair and renewal, where there is destruction. Through Christ, an invitation is extended all to partake in this transformative experience and live lives that reflect the glory and the goodness of God. The timeless wisdom of Isaiah was found in chapter 43, 
verses 18 and 19, further emphasizes the importance of looking forward rather than dwelling on the past. Forget about the past and don't dwell on it. Look, I am doing something new. It's happening right now, can't you see it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the dry land. This message encourages believers to let go of the past and focus on the new things God is doing. Even in difficult times, God promises to bring life and hope, like rivers in the desert. In the Bible, these stories show God's love, renewal, and restoration. They invite believers to join in God's ongoing work, where we experience a change that goes beyond the physical and touches our souls. Let these eternal truths fill our hearts, inviting us to celebrate in the joyful dance of God's renewal and revival, just like how Israel celebrated with tambourines in their joyful dances. As we embrace God's new work in our lives, let's trust Him to guide us through every challenge and dry season. His promise of making streams flow in the wasteland reminds us that even in our hardest times, His presence and provision are constant. If you were touched by our message in this video, we encourage you to check out our other video showing on your screen now and subscribe to support our channel too. We promise it will be a blessing to you. Amen. See you in the next one.